If you like our videos, check out our merchandise. Every purchase helps us keep making awesome projects and videos for you. Visit thensi.org slash store today. Hello guys, welcome to the Geek Group. Today, Mr. Kidwell and I and the team are in the high voltage lab where we are working on Project Thumper. We're doing some upgrades and removing the original power rails, replacing them with much larger and more substantial power rails. This is the 11th upgrade to Project Thumper over the years. Oh, thank you, sir. And uh, this is the first time we've ever upgraded the main power rails, so that's, that's kind of cool. I'm excited. I know Paul just tingles with anticipation. These are 250 MCM copper bus. Okay, well, never mind. Hey, Paul, remember how you told me there was no way that was going to work and we'd have I to. I was saying it wasn't going to be easy. I was trying to make it easier worked, for Paul. you. All right, now we just take these out. The uh, original power rails are just. 250 MCM solid copper cable. It's this. Well, it isn't solid, it's stranded, but it's, it's all copper all the way through. And these are old. They've had a lot of abuse on them. You can see there's, there's actually chunks blown out. And you can see a lot of copper oxide from temperature and abuse. <laughs> we, we've done a lot of dirty, dirty things to these. These have had thousands and thousands of firings through them. That didn't work well. <laughs> And uh, we're upgrading to something much more substantial. This is 250 MCM. So it's, uh, it's about as big around as my thumb for comparison. And we're upgrading to... Here. Oh, hey, you've got a piece. All right, so this is the old rail. This is the new rail. This is 535 MCM fine strand copper. It's even tinned and uh, it's good stuff. This is, this is gonna be a lot, way more betterer. Betterer? Way more betterer. Way more Not better. Not just a little bit betterer, way more betterer. So the rails have to be rigidly mounted because when they go off, you've got a positive rail and a negative rail and they generate a substantial electromotive force. So, because there's, it's a big magnetic field. You've got plus and minus and it's all DC. This one wants to spin everything. So there's a lot of force trying to move the rails in this direction relative to each other. So we have to have a way to support the rails rigidly so that they don't move. You got it? Do now. Are you using a pair of vice grips? We're, we're wrecking. Vice grips? I'd use a wrecking bar if I thought it would work. Hold on. How's that working for you? There, now. You wanna do that? Yeah, go. Oh, you're my hero, Mr. Kidwell. I try. So we gotta, Inside. the now bottom ones one, are, How did the bottom ones go in? There's a cup. I understand that. They went in and then they bolted on. So, so we're gonna need a ratchet. There's, there will be a ratchet. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, well, it, mm. how on earth did those go in? Wrench, wrench. Yeah, I understand that. Socket wrench here. Is there enough space for the There's socket? totally enough space, tons of room. It's great. Okay. Okay, um, all these can go in a bucket. I'm gonna move these out of the way and we'll find appropriate wrenches. Sometimes it's a salad bowl. Sometimes it's a top load, as you can tell by the bolt. Today, it's a parts container. Uh, no. Good plan. Worked in theory, not in practice. What, what do you got going on? Oh, it's 9 16 all right. Okay. So you use a regular socket. These are the special 2B sockets that we use for Tesla coil stuff where I gotta go way down to thread the okay. drop. I'm gonna need a Everybody's deep always one. using a special socket.
All right, so what Batman is doing back here is taking everything apart, all of these caps, like this is just a typical shelf. We have main rails like this, and they go out to the back. So it connect like this, and then these would connect to the big main vertical rails. But this is the bus for this shelf. There's eight shelves inside the, the main capacitor array. Each one is five rows deep of four capacitors. And the caps are 450 volts each. They connect together with little copper bus bars like this. And all the pluses are on the right. All the, all the minuses are on the left when viewed from the back. And these over time, these connections, because there's a lot of mechanical stuff moving around, they get a little loose and you can see it here where it's all sputzed out. That's just some ablation and we take the bars off, we clean everything. Each one of these will get individually cleaned and polished, and then we'll clean off the caps, and then everything goes back together, and we even have a special torque wrench. This is a torque screwdriver for this project because there's a, if you look up the caps, and you can see the front of the cap gives you the part number and all that stuff, you can look these up, and they have a specific amount of torque to put these in so that it's, tight enough that it's perfectly tight, but not too tight that you start stripping things out. So what you got going on? As part of the maintenance process, we check every single cap to make sure that it's within its specifications. And this tells us if a cap has failed, because it is possible for them to fail and we don't know it yet. The, the only way we'd know right away is if they failed short. We'd know that in a hurry because there'd be a big hole where the capacitor used to be. But with this, we can go in and individually measure every single cap and know that they're all operating within spec and that nothing's dying or anything's weird. And it's just part of the basic maintenance and safety of everything. So there's three fundamental forces at play here. When this discharges, it's a massive amount of energy, but for a very short period of time. So because of that, there's a lot of current, about 80,000 amps, give or take. So there's that. The second thing at play is during that discharge, there's a lot of mechanical stress because of all the electromagnetic forces going on, everything tries to move. And we've shot some really cool high-speed video a couple times with Thumper. I'm sure we'll get some more in the near future with the new system. But everything moves. When, when it fires, everything moves. The third thing it, at play is the voltage is considerable. It's about 1,800 volts. So you've got a lot of amps, a lot of energy and motion, and a lot of voltage, which is prone to arcing out. So when this happens, every time it fires, everything moves, and anything that's even the slightest bit loose does this, because it'll arc out. Well, what happens is it either arcs and shoots sparks like a loose bolt on top, one of these, they tend to shoot some sparks off. And you'll see this in the old videos if you look, especially in the blog, we see it a lot. So there's that, and that creates metallic particles that deposit on things throughout the inside of the case. And that happens a lot on the backs. Like this one was one of the main connections and you can see it got a lot of power going through it. So this, every time this blasts off, you can see there's bits of metal missing and there's some molten metal down here. So things melt and they spritz off and that metal deposits on things. You can see it on the back of the caps over there. So that gives us like a green copper oxide over everything. Well, that copper oxide conducts electricity so when this builds up enough, we get more weird arcing stuff happening. It takes years for it to happen, but this machine doesn't exactly get a complete teardown every year. It's not practical to do that. So every few years we do a complete teardown when it starts hissing and popping and spitzing and yeah. So when you put all those together, <laughs> you have a giant tank of a machine that has to be super rigidly built but it has to be just a little bit flexible so that it doesn't break its own internal components. And it has to be built to contain the blast because if something goes wrong, like if, if this system's at full charge and one of the caps has an internal short, that cap's going to turn into a grenade filled with goop and it makes an epic mess. <laughs> and it's very scary when it happens. It'll actually blow the, you can see everything in here is very rigid, but the actual side panels are kind of weebly. And that's on purpose. We, we, we went with this cabinet because of that, so that if one of those decides to grenade inside the cabinet, the sides will pop off 
because it's better for them to absorb that energy and get a big bow and a dent and then fall down than it is to have a rigid box where we don't know which way all that energy is gonna go. So there's, there's a lot of really boring safety stuff involved in Project Thumper that isn't really obvious at first glance. And most people don't realize that the side panels are very weebly and they're not, usually in a rack like this, the side panels would be rigidly connected to these rails and they're not, they're, it's totally off. So that's what we're up against today. Ah! That's, that's had a few years in there. Yeah, I don't think that's the way a screwdriver was intended to be. Not used. really, no, that's, that's uh, quite the system, but it works. Hey, whatever Couldn't floats your boat. put a socket in there. Yeah. I'm ready when you are. Go. Ah! All right, so everything else we could get behind and pop out, but these actually extend down below into the frame. So we can't get in, and you can see the purple tells us that that's glued. We can't get in there, so really the easy solution is to just cut it off. And... I would cut it off vertically. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it here. Just be far enough that you're not hitting the head. All right, I'll cut, out, I'll cut, I'll cut it off here, and we can pull this off with pliers. Yes. All right. Quick, easy. I like it! Ooh. <laughs> hey, 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 I don't need that kind of modification. Okay, so that's, we gotta make a new one of these. Yes. That's gonna be a thing. We're gonna need a cap, because that holds the weight of the wire. Right. In this case, that's gonna be considerable. So we might wanna message the team that we sent off to the store. All right, it's got to go. It's going to be an end cap. So that means there's going to be a cap. Hold on. There's going to be a cap. Right. There's got to be a piece of pipe between it's here be and this the cap. size on the it's bottom. Got to be for that. Sure. It because has to. that's inch and a quarter. Okay. So she's going to need a short piece of inch and a quarter pipe, just one of the little stubby pieces they sell, and she's going to need a couple end caps. And we got to drill bigger holes. That's a Joey job. Hey Joey. I need you to embiggen a hole for me, please. Yeah. Cool. Batman, you got a Sharpie on you? I grabbed the wrong kind of Sharpie. That's what I need. There is already a hole here. I just need it to be larger, so I need you to embiggen the hole. We don't know if that metal plate will come out or if it's welded in place. So that's what I need. It's not by a lot, but it matters. Okay, that's, that's what I got. So I need this. I need this to just comfortably pop through those two holes. All right, so we're at the point now where we're getting ready to do the mounts for the main power rails. And most of it is just, give me a cap, please. Cap. Is the, the, 
What cap? You got a cap in front of you. The little mounty thing that the bolt goes through cap. Oh, they're in there. Yes. So we've got one inch drilled plumbing plugs. And those go in there. And then the bolt goes through and that mounts to here. We've got a hole drilled in the side of our rail mounts. So that'll give a physical hold down there. Now the original ones were screw connections. These are just slip and plug, so we're going to have to actually glue these in place. So that'll go in like that, and this will give us mounts for the whole thing. And the idea is that we'll put the rails in, and then we'll cut and strip the rails in between, so that will actually be insulation inside these. Um, the alternative that we could do is strip the entire thing and go down a size, but I don't know, I think it'll look cooler with the, the insulation on it. Yeah, we're going to have to have the insulation split to put the yeah. top of rails in. Yeah, no matter what we do, we got to do it, so. I think we might wind up stripping the insulation off those completely. Now, you want to be fancy. You can split the insulation off clean in short chunks and then cut them to length and just snap them around after you put the bands on. That could be a thing. It'd be pretty. It would be pretty. Mm -hmm. So we go with the smaller ones? I think. I think you only had that one big one, didn't you? No, we had a full set My of concern, no, I'm keeping the insulation out, I'm only taking it off when we need to. Because this is much finer strands. Okay. And there's so much weight. Okay. And it's all vertical in compression. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep the strands? They'll right? mush. Got it. All right. And by, we strip it you know, only in spots, and the spots where we're stripping it, we've got pipe clamps. Mm -hmm. or hose clamps around it that'll hold it together and they'll splint it. Okay, whatever so, you want to do. That's my plan. I am inspecting the wiring diagram, or the wiring diagram, the wiring for the uh, power shelf. Um, the cable that runs from the control cabinet all the way along the fence and is coiled right there winds up going in where these wires are here. The wires themselves are actually numbered. They literally stamp the numbering right on the wire, like this is number nine and that's number four. So all I have to do is strip the casing off there and put the proper wire number in the proper slot here and we should be good to go. Everything looks clean and undamaged or everything should just work when we get it wired back in again. There's a lot of goop in there and I have to hold this screw with one goopy hand. It has to go in here in that hole and then this has to go in that hole. It's a very close fit. Did you get washers? Yeah. Give me a wash. Open them up. Thank you, sir. Just flat washers, not lock washers? Yes. Apparently, the right screwdriver. I need. What you need? I need a Joey. Joey? I gotta get in and over to hold. Well, like quarter inch drive ratchet, maybe? Maybe. See if you can find me something. I don't need a lot of depth, but I need it small enough to, to pass through that. 
Maybe a Here, I'll give you another one of those to do while I get these in place. Take that. I'm trying to get around that corner. While he sorts that out, I'll do the next one. to do this as clean as I can because I don't want to screw up the paint job with either purple or blue. So I'm just trying to limit my goop. And they both fit in the hole. Always a plus. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. So, give me the red wire, please. Okay. Batman, you're threaded.
So you guys are Do they go in an order or did we just leave tails in there enough to identify what those tails are? Tails enough. Nope. The word. Yeah, that hence the tails. Yes. That's why they're there. What plugs in here? Anything we want. Is you put a service out and you plugged around the board? Yep. Is this just because you had one laying around and thought it was cool? I thought we had one laying around and I was constantly needing something, so I'm gonna plug in, so hey, why not? This is a thing. And this whole board has had a detailed going through and cleaning. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's time for us to do a complete redesign on this in the next year and set it up with a lot more metering and some kind of connection to a network. I don't know if it'd be best to do Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or what, but I'd like to try and do it wireless and see if it works. I'm sure we're going to get a thousand people to comment like, oh, we're going to have it. Let's give it a shot because Wi-Fi modules are cheap. Bluetooth modules are cheap. Let's, let's spend 20 bucks and try it. Besides, we've got this whole thing in there. Isn't it our Arduino anywhere? Got a place to plug it in. There you go. We got a spot yeah, I was for thinking right here. A little spot yeah. for our yeah. yeah, Right next to the 4,000 volt AC transformer. Yeah, give it a thumb clearance. It'll be fine.
We're loading the capacitors into the rack. And we're trimming the, the back connections to the main bus rails are a little bit long because our spacing is a little bit different from the old system. So we have to trim a tiny bit off on each side. So I'm marking them. Okay, pulled out. Okay. Right on the line, Batman. Don't, don't short me. Go. Okay. You want to come around and do that? Okay. Here, hang on. Just hang on. Open the one. Okay. Thank you. That's how much we're trimming off. It's just tiny little bits. All right. That's perfect. All right, next one. That one fits. All right, that's that. Batman starts putting on hose clips. We gotta clear off. Putting on hose clips, I'm half done. Okay, well we gotta, well not half done. Before you go on doing that, you gotta take the, uh, the plastic bits off. We gotta clear off the last little bit of the plastic. A fair bit of it in a lot of places. Like that. All right, so for the next part, now we've got to join the output table to the supply cabinet. And we're gonna go back down to a single cable on each side. And I'd rather have two, but for, our, for how we're hooking it up, we're, we're going to big substantial clamps. And for the current setup, I can only feed one output wire. Given that we have a massive increase in the rails on there and everything, I hope it kind of balances it out. And really, we've only got a single, well, on each side, a 535 MCM rail there. So all, it makes sense to have a single 535 MCM rail here. We're not, we're not really losing anything. So I'm gonna take off the duals on here. We're going to cut down, I've got Got a couple pieces of this, and I can probably get away with just cutting up one. I might be able to cut it in half and start from there. We'll see what I get. But the idea is we're going to, for years, we've had a really crappy bushing setup, which I just had sitting here and somebody threw away. But it came out the sides of the, the panel here. I don't wanna do that anymore, that's, that's bad. That's one of those where like present me looks at past me and says, wow, you were dumb. You could have done this so much better. So we're doing it better. And these are gonna tie in down here. We've got two open spots at the bottom. And I'm gonna put it, we're gonna strip this and put a clamp right there on each side. And then my outputs are gonna come right off the back. So they're gonna come from here and go around. So this will hook in like that and then feed into the box. So the idea is going to be, mount one of these where those are, just one, and it'll come down and then go, well that'd be the black, so that'd be the close one, and it'll go right into the back of the cabinet right here. And the cabinet, like this, this might, might go back and in or something like that, I'll figure it out. How much length do I have if I just, not nearly enough, so yeah, we're doing this as two separates. So this will begin with terminating that in there, which means I gotta take that out. Hey, Joey. Yeah. Actually, Joey and Batman, come here, please. Joey, could you please carefully strip the bottom two interstitial spaces? And Batman, can you get me a socket that fits that? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Chris, you ready to put the lights on the top of this thing? Yeah, sure. All right, gentlemen, the rack of lights need to go up here. <clears throat> Here's the 
your side ain't moving. <laughs> You hold that, I'll put the bolt through. Totally fits, look at that, it's great. They both, and it both fits, it's all right, Batman, it's all right. Hang on, I gotta, let me switch over your high-tech ratchet here. Top? Yeah. Bottom? Are you on there? Yeah. The ratchet is too aggressive. Ah. Ah. Okay. Let's do the other one. Ready? Top? Yep. Yeah. <sighs> this wrench sucks! Bottom. <clears throat> ah! This side. Top. Ah! <clears throat> That's on. All right, and we have extra hardware for Batman. There. All right, Joe, I'm ready when you are. Okay. All right, all right, we'll do an air test. Clear. Key in. I got power to the cabinet. Went up. Went up. Clear. 
Works like it should. Why don't you give me a little voltage? I can give you a little voltage. How much you want? See, just give it a, like a second and tell me what you get. What do you got? 104.3. Yeah, no you don't. 104. Now what do you got? Uh, 81. Now what do you got? 59. Oh man, somebody, I know where, I remember where it used to be. What do you got now? 37.6. What do you got now? 47.6. Eh, what do you got now? 44.43. Pretty close. Take it up to about 200. Going to 200. Clear. What do you got? 208.5. I'm reading 203 right here. Okay. 207. I, I do not think I can tweak it closer, but just continuously read it off, please. 206. 20, whoa, shit. 188. Yeah, hair breath. 219. 203. 186. I had it. 185. What do you got? I'm waiting for it to stabilize. 220, 230, 2, 217, 215, 209. I need like a 15 turn pot on this board. So make a new board, 202. Good, that'll do. Now, okay, bring it up to about four or 500. Going to 500. Life's getting exciting back here now. Mm. 400. 450, 512, yeah. 511, 510. We're out of here. 509, 508. Dump it so I can reload. Clear. I can't dump it until he's away from it. Go ahead. Charging bank. Numbers are looking better now? Yeah, it's looking much more realistic now. Because I've done this once or twice, and I know how long it takes to charge. I'm like, that's way fast. Yeah. Somebody had tweaked the knob. No. Well, it got we moved around we reversed a lot. The, we reversed the uh, polarity on the sense line, oh. so it was exactly opposite of what it needed to be. OK. As memory, Crossing 1,000 volts. As memory serves, the, light goes out, the lights go out at about 1,500. Thirteen fifty. Fourteen. Well, lights are going off when they're supposed 15. to. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen hundred volts on the bank. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Voltage on the bank. Voltage left two hundred on the bank. Small charge. Yep, she's dumping now. I forgot how loud that damn thing was. So that worked. So at uh, 1845 hours on February 19th, 2018, Project Thumper is officially back online and ready for show. We got a little bit of cleanup work to do, but let me take a minute and show you guys what we did. Ah, that smell. All right, so at the end of last year, when we started to get ready for overhauling the high voltage lab, one of the first things we did was tear down Thumper. Now, Thumper has been in a continuous process of upgrades pretty much since we built it, which is kind of the truth of the entire geek group. We built this table last year. This was done in conjunction with pretty much all the core members. 
We built a whole new table setup, and the idea is we have the ability to shoot high-speed video from below with a sacrificial plate here of uh, polycarbonate. This is all redone. The next step for here is to be able to do current metering so that we can start getting a lot of scope stuff. We got a whole new scope for it. We got all kinds of stuff. We're missing a few parts, but this is very close to done. Sam built the new switch. Um, this is a whole new pneumatic setup. It's beautiful. It's got replaceable parts. We're thrilled with it. And then two days ago, we started the massive, complete teardown and overhaul of the entire main thumper cabinet. We got rid of the sides, we got rid of the door, just stripped it down, uh, gave it a paint job. That was kind of a surprise thing I did on Sunday. And we upgraded the main power rails right here. You can see these are up to a 535 MCM cable. This is copper, but it's tinned, so it has that silvery color to it. We're adding in a lot more clamps because the cable's a lot softer. So this is just an initial test setup. You're gonna see a lot more hose clamps here. This will be really tightly bundled all the way down. Down on the bottom end, the original setup that Thumper's had for years has had the power tapped off in the middle, feeding out through a panel off to the side. The new setup, much more skookum. We've got big, giant bronze clamp connectors. These are designed for substation use and we got these locally, and this has allowed us to just properly clamp on to the setup. It's a long way from where we began. So now we come out the bottom of the cabinet, the cables sit on the floor, they're rigid enough. We're gonna, we'll shoot some high-speed video and see how much they jiggle around, but it looks all right. And we definitely had enough throughput out to the main buses, so everything there worked good, and we've had our first initial test firing. There's going to be a lot more work to do. We've got to clean up a lot of the mess, but it works. So that's something. And I want to get all the guys in here. Come on in here a second. Really? You forgot to put that on? I'm blaming you. No, it's, it's with the bronze clamps. Yeah, it's not this, that hard. Well, no, we'll take it off on this end and pass it on there. So this is, this is the next real step. So the main assembly was done here today with Joey, Andrew, Mr. Kidwell, and myself. And the next step, now that we've got it working, things are gonna change a lot. Because now that it works and we, we're back into doing demos and stuff like that for the Saturday tours and school groups, the next step is metering. Yes. So this is gonna be a thing. And with metering, a whole new step's gonna happen where we're gonna be able to share the data from Thumper on the internet, on our live stream, in real time. So there's gonna be a lot of really cool science made available to the public as a result of this. It's gonna be a whole new thing. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. I wanna thank you guys for helping out and making this happen. We've been thrashing on this for a while. So as always, you guys have fun. We'll see you next time.